And welcome back, everybody. Over the last decade or so, I mean, there has been a massive bourbon boom in the tri-state. Yes, and here to talk about an event focused on making the bourbon business more welcoming to all is Missy Spears, Executive Director of Queer Kentucky. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. So, oh. so during the commercial break, that was the first thing I mentioned was bourbon. It's not that people didn't love bourbon always, mm. but it has become, whether you're looking at it from a business perspective, a tourism perspective, it is, it's a really important thing and it needs to be accessible to everyone. That's your mission. Tell me about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I am the executive director of Queer Kentucky. We are a state-based nonprofit in Kentucky that uplifts storytelling. Uh, we love telling stories. Love and something we really wanted to dive into was talking about the uh, the queer inclusion within the bourbon industry. Uh, there are so many uh, queer folks behind the scenes that are working. Uh, here I brought our magazine. We have New Riff CEO Hannah Lowen uh, in, in our area yeah. uh, throughout the state. There are so many other bourbon superstars. And then we, uh, then we launched Bourbon and Belonging, which is just a collection of 50 plus events across the state, eight different cities uh, that we're hosting this week, just to show folks that these people work here. Uh, we can have inclusive fun spaces and just just open it up to everyone. Yeah. Well, tell us more about bourbon and belonging and events that are coming up uh, within our area that people can talk about. Because like you said, there are oh, multiple different yes. events, but you've got some coming up. Absolutely. Northern Kentucky is the second biggest hub in the state of events. Uh, tonight, we have our new Rift launch party that starts at 6. Uh, folks can go to bourbonandbelonging.com and grab tickets. Uh, tomorrow, we have a series of events from the Metropolitan Club, Business of Bourbon and Belonging. Uh, the Standard is doing smoked meats and bourbon. Uh, Friday, we're throwing a party at the Leaping Lizard. There are things every day from now until Sunday. Wonderful. Why Why is it so important to, to uplift the LGBTQ community when it comes to, to bourbon in particular? Why, why was this something you wanted to, I don't know if rally around is the right word, but why yeah. was that important? Uh, there's a couple different reasons. Uh, number one, in Kentucky, bourbon is huge. Oh gosh, yeah, you know. <laughs> you're not kidding. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, in going uh, traditionally, it's had a very uh, conservative image. You know, if you look at like the the magazine ads or the TV ads, you know, it's all like yeah. straight uh, white men. No offense. Uh, <laughs> None taken. Yeah. You nailed it. That's exactly what I am. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Uh, but it's like such a huge market, and different groups have such big buying power that you know we want to see ourselves reflected in it. Sure. So that sure. was a big reason. There's veteran bourbon groups, black bourbon groups, women's groups, uh, and now we have a queer group. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you talk about the group Queer Kentucky in general and Ooh. its purpose? Yeah. So we were founded in 2018. Uh, it started with our founder, Spencer Jenkins, driving around the state with a Polaroid camera and wow. writing up profiles of people on his blog. Uh, now we reach over 700,000 people a year. We have an online platform where we publish stories, queerkentucky.com, and then we do our print publication three times a year. How important has it been to, to pull this group together? And when I say how, how has it been important? How has it been important to the community in Kentucky to, to know mm. that there, there are folks out there who are having these events to uplift the community in that way? In yeah, Kentucky, it, specifically. It's so important. Yeah. You know, uh, number one in Kentucky, the, the national narrative on us is typically negative. Um, you know, if you see a story on us, it's uh, something bad politically or, you know, we're ranked late, last in the state, in the country somewhere. Um, it's also great that, you know, since we are in eight areas, obviously we're going to be in Lexington, Louisville, Northern Kentucky, um, all more queer friendly spaces. But we're also going to be in Paducah, in Bardstown, in Bullitt wow. County. Good. Um, and those places, you know, get to host their own, uh, you know, queer event for this, which is great. And it's probably important to find, you know, have a database of places where people can go and know that there are events where they can go and feel welcomed and safe and, yeah. and, and that type of thing. Is that something people can find on the website and in the magazines? Uh, yeah, so if they go to um, our, our website, they'll be able to see all the companies that are participating yeah. in it. And we're hoping through uh, forming the relationships with them that they'll yeah. continue to participate with the yeah. queer community going forward. I just keep thinking about in a place like Paducah. Mm. Do, do you know what I mean? You, you wouldn't historically think of an event like this happening in Paducah. And I'm not, yeah. it's nothing against Paducah or anything else. I just mean, traditionally speaking, perhaps someone who, who is living in an area who would like a space like this might never imagine something like this being there. And so for folks yeah. who live in those areas, this has to be huge. It is huge. And Paducah has actually been one of the most exciting cities to see come together around yeah. this. Their business district put together an entire slate of events on Saturday. That's, I think they have like 10 events going on. That's great. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's really, and you said storytellers too. Ooh, like, absolutely. How are you telling those stories? And, and what kinds of stories Ooh. are you telling? 
Uh, so we use a, different, a couple different formats. Uh, number one, we work with writers. Uh, so you know we're uplifting their words on our uh, digital and print publications. Um, we're also working with uh, different storytelling events. In Louisville on Saturday, we're doing bourbon and books, and we're inviting publishers to come out and talk about their work in storytelling. Um, uh, tomorrow at the Metropolitan Club, we're going to have the chief sales officer, Ronica Dillingham of New Riff, talking about her work and what she does. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, between in-person events and online and print, Wonderful. That's awesome. If people want to get tickets to any of these events, find out more information, maybe they're a business out there that wants to get involved, where can they go? Yeah, absolutely. Bourbonandbelong.com. Uh, we have all of the information on there for the events. If they're interested in uh, partnering with us with Queer Kentucky, uh, queerkentucky.com, or they can contact us through the Bourbon and Belonging website as well. Yeah. Awesome. Missy, awesome. thanks for coming yeah, this thank morning. You thank you so much for having this me. Yeah. Information. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really appreciate the time. Sure, you can stop watching, but let's be honest, you want to know more. Tap the links or even better, click subscribe to stay in the know.